Hello and welcome back to another episode of From Prison to the Streets. I'm Eric. I did 11 years in prison and I talk about prison stuff. Today I'm talking about how you make your prison time go by quicker. How you make it go by fast, right? Like and subscribe if you like the video and you want to see more content like this. With that, let's get into the video. The first thing that I want to do is address the question of whether time goes by faster or slower when you're in prison. And the reason why I want to address that is you'll get different answers from different people. Some folks who are in prison seem to think that time goes by really slow. It's very monotonous, while other people think that time goes by really quick when you're in prison. Honestly, whether your prison time goes by fast or slow depends on how you do your time. And it depends on the type of person you are. For me, when I was in prison, time seemed to go by really fast. And to me, it seemed that had something to do with reference points and also how I did my time and the type of person I was. But reference points had a big part of it. They were a, a big factor in that. When you're out here in the free world, you have holidays and stuff like that. You know, in the springtime, you'll have Easter or you might not celebrate Easter, but whatever. Um, you'll have stuff like Father's Day, Mother's Day, birthdays, Christmas, Thanksgiving, all that good stuff. You have the starting and stopping of the school seasons. And if you have kids, that's significant. You have all these reference points throughout the year that are references of the passage of time. You know, you can look back and say, okay, well, you know, this happened before Christmas or this happened after Christmas and so forth and so on. They provide reference points throughout the year. In prison, you do the same thing every day. You know, you have a, a job if you're on a work details. You, you go do that job every day. You have the same people that are around you all the time. You live in the same place for years on end. You eat the same food for years on end. It's all more of the same, and every day is just another day. Christmas isn't really anything special in prison. You don't get a lot of special stuff around the holidays. You know, they might fix some sort of special meal, but it's not really that great. You know, it's it's not what it's cracked up to be. It's, it's not really that special of a meal. It's, it's usually pretty rough. And it's the same with every other holiday. You know, Fourth of July comes around. You might have a watermelon feed, but they quit doing that when I was in El Dorado for a while because there was a big gang fight out there. But that's a different story for a different day. My point is, all the days are the same. You know, you don't have that reference point of what was I doing last Christmas or or whatever. Every day, every month, every week, year, whatever, it's about the same as the last. And because nothing really changes up, it all just seems to run together. And before you know it, five years, seven years, eight years, ten years, time has passed you by. And you look back and you wonder where it all went. That's how my time was. For other people, the monotony gets to them. I'm okay with routine. I'm okay with doing the same thing every day. A lot of times I follow a very strict schedule on what I'm doing day to day. I wake up roughly at the same time every day. I take a shower roughly at the same time every day. I take my dog out roughly at the same time every day. It might not be right on the money, but day in and day out, I'm, I'm okay with doing the same things. Some folks ain't like that. Some folks really don't like monotony. They don't like routine and they like to go different places and do different things and see different people. And you can't do any of that in prison. Usually these folks that have a hard time with, you know, doing time, with time going by slowly, are people that aren't super active while they're in prison. Now, that's not true for everybody. You know, my brother Kevin, he was very busy while he was locked up, but he felt like time was moving more slowly while he was in prison. But I think he's the type of person that really doesn't like doing the same thing day in and day out necessarily. He likes going places. He likes seeing people. He likes, you know, stuff like that. I like to stay busy. 
but I'm pretty comfortable staying busy in the same environment. You know, I grew up in a town of a hundred people. I don't need to go to town all the time. I don't need to see people. I don't need to talk to people. I don't need to go do things. I can do things here. That's where I'm at. And not everybody's like that. Some people, they start doing the same thing day in and day out. They get tired of eating the same old food. They get tired of going to the same work detail. They get tired of going to the same church call out and they get bored. That happens. And even even me, I would get tired of the monotony. But for some folks, it really gets to them and it makes their time go by really slow. It's kind of like if you're in pain, it seems like you're in pain for forever, right? If you seriously hurt yourself or something like that and you're, you know, let's say you broke your arm and you're sitting in the ER, it'll seem like it took a doctor 10 hours to come see you when in fact that wasn't the case. When something's unpleasant, it seems like time goes by a lot slower. I said that how you do your time has an effect on how fast or slow time goes by, and I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. Uh, A big part of that is staying busy, though. But kind of getting into how you do your time, I want to talk about something called time structuring. And this is something that I learned from one of my cellies, Tony Hunt, when I was pretty early on in my prison sentence. Time structuring is what it sounds like. And it can work on a large scale and a small scale. It's structuring your time. But on a large scale, an example would be, let's say you have 10 years to serve in prison. You'll say, all right, well, I have 10 years to do. So for two years, I'm really going to pursue fitness. I'm going to be in the weight pit all the time. I'm going to get a subscription to Muscle and Fitness and Flex Magazine. I'm going to eat all the the right nutrition. I'm going to get big. I'm going to get shredded. Whatever. For two years, I'm going to be really into fitness. And then after that, for two years, I'm going to be really into hobby craft. And maybe two years after that, I'm going to really dive into entertainment for a couple of years. And I'll watch TV all the time. And people will structure their time that way. It's a really good way to do time. And kind of what mine looked like when I first came down, I was really into fitness for a couple of years. And I worked out for, you know, the the whole time I was down. But when I first got to prison, I worked out quite a bit in comparison to what I did later on in my sentence. I started out hitting the weights all the time, and then I kind of moved on to other things. And then I worked on music quite a bit. I pursued that. And then I worked on the JCs. I pursued that, and I was teaching classes. That was a pursuit of mine, and I ran a religious call-out. And so I had structured my time so every other year or every few years, I would be doing something different. It gets old and time starts going by more slowly if you don't kind of break out of that box every once in a while and go do something else. Another part of that, you know, like Tony, he said, well, I'm going to do this, this, and this while I'm here. And then after I'm here for 10 or 15 years, I'm going to try to get a transfer to another prison and see a new place with new people and start all over. And that helped his time go by faster. That's how time structuring works on a large scale. On a small scale, it's your day-to-day routine. Okay, I get up, I'm going to work out a little bit at around five, and then I'm going to study for an hour or two. That's what I would do. I would get up, I would do some push-ups, and I'd hop up on my bunk, and I would read either the Bible or one of my other religious texts, and I would, you know, do that first thing in the morning. And then I would go out to lay in yard, because even though it was lay in yard, it was for people without jobs. I was a dog handler, so I could more or less go out to, to just about every yard. I would go out to yard, and I would get a guitar, and I would sit down, and I would play the acoustic guitar on the yard for a while, or I would go to the band room. When I came back from lunch, you know, I would do some more studying or work on schoolwork or something like that. Then in the afternoon, I had stuff going on. I would go work in the JC's office, and 
I'd come back from that, make myself something to eat. And in the evening, I would go to a religious call out and then I'd come back and watch TV with Kevin. Like we had all of our shows that were on, you know, down. We we had it to where on Tuesday we would watch something. On Wednesday, we would watch something. And it was just something that would make time go by quicker. And it was cool because it was almost like we were on the streets, you know, when you chill with a family member or something like that. Or you go hang with a friend at the end of the day after you get off work. It was kind of cool. And that routine felt good. It made things feel kind of normal, but it also made it feel like I wasn't doing the same thing all the time. It broke up my day quite a bit, and that was really helpful. And that's how time structuring works on a small scale. A big part of it is staying busy. There's this misconception that in prison, you just have all the time in the world on your hands and it's all free time, basically. But if you have a job, I wasn't always a dog handler. I worked maintenance quite a bit, and I worked as a clerk out at Jim and Yard. You know, I had busy days. It's not one of those things where you don't have anything to do. All you do is sit around and work out all day. That's not how prison works. If you stay busy, you can make your time go by a lot faster. And I think that's probably true out here on the streets. But it seems like, for me, time out here goes by a lot more slowly. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But my prison time seemed to go by really, really quickly. Anyway, that is more or less the end of the video. But before I go... I wanted to promote myself a little bit because I think I made $3 <laughs> from YouTube last month, aside from the donations for my for my mom and, and when I was in the hospital. YouTube, Google doesn't really pay out a whole lot of money for YouTube, but um, what I'm getting at is that I have merch. So I have beanies, I have shirts, I have joggers, I have coffee cups. This is a real cool coffee cup that my wife designed for me. Um, I don't know if you can read it, but it says, if you don't want me to do time, let me have my coffee. And on the other side, it's got kind of a old school prison on it. Kind of neat. But I got all sorts of merch on there. So if you want to help support the channel, you know, there's links to all that down in the description. I also have a Patreon page, but I don't really have any Patreon patrons, so I haven't added a whole bunch of perks to that. If I get some patrons, I will. Right now, the main perk is you get to interact with me. I'll send you a message or something if I have a patron. Um, or, you know, I'll, I'll do some special content for you guys and give you some behind-the-scenes stuff. Right now, patrons basically get early access to my videos, although... That doesn't happen either because I don't have any patrons, but you could be my first. So there's that. I also have a link to my PayPal in the description if you want to support the channel that way. But I really appreciate y'all's love and support. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving me a like. And if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe. It helps out the channel. And with that, I'm Eric. This has been another episode of From Prison to the Streets. I will see you all later.